Well, hello, Internet, and welcome to my tutorial on how to install ZAMP on Windows 10. Now, ZAMP stands for cross-platform. That's the X part, Apache, MySQL, PHP, and Perl. And it is the easy way to set up a web server and database for testing on your own local computer. And in this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to set up ZAMP. I'm going to show you how to fix all common ZAMP errors. I'm going to show you how to create a MySQL database, a MySQL user account, a PHP slash MySQL configuration file. Also, I'm going to cover all the PHP code used to retrieve and update data in the MySQL database and a whole bunch more. And so I have a lot to do, so let's get into it. Okay, so very first thing, I'm going to show you this from numerous different angles, and I on purpose set my system up to cause the most amount of errors so that I can hopefully catch every error that you could possibly get into. All right, so this is Windows 10, and what I'm going to do here first is I'm going to open up the user account control settings. And I'm going to do that by hitting the little window button or the start button, wherever you want to call it. And I'm going to type in UAC and change user account control settings is going to pop up. And I'm going to click on that. And whenever I do, this little guy right here is going to pop on the screen. It's probably going to be up here somewhere. So just drag it down here and then we're going to click on OK. Then what we're going to do is we're going to go to ApacheFriends.org and index.html. And you're going to see something like this. And since you're using Windows, we're going to be clicking on this guy. Linux users as well as OSX users are probably not going to use XAMPP because there's already a built-in web server, or at least with Linux, it's extremely easy to install. It's actually very easy to install otherwise. But XAMPP is an awesome tool if you are on Windows. So we're going to click that we want to download XAMPP. And it's going to download for us, and you're going to see a little button down here, and we're going to click on Run so that we can install everything. After you do that, you may or may not see this error message right here, where it's basically saying that it can't install certain things, or certain things may be an issue because of the user account control settings, and blah, blah, blah. Just ignore that for now. We're going to go in and fix that. And whenever you do, you're going to see the XAMPP setup pop up on the screen. We're going to click on Next. And we're just going to leave everything checked exactly as it is right here. Just make sure everything's checked, but it should be by default. And we'll click on Next. And it's best to just keep everything installed in the location that it sets up here in the beginning. And we're going to click on Next. And then you're probably going to want to uncheck this unless you want to receive a whole bunch of emails from Bitnami. If you do, leave that checked. I unchecked it and clicked on Next. And it's going to say that it's ready to install, so click on Next. And it's going to unpack all those files and install them for you. And whenever it's all finished, you're probably going to get a message that your firewall's blocking this. Just put a checkbox in right here where it says Private Networks and uncheck this one and click on Allow Access. And then the final setup is all complete. We're going to check here that we want to open up our control panel and see what else we need to fix and click on Finish. Now what we're going to want to do is you're going to go to your C drive and then XAMPP and then Apache and Configuration and Extra. And you're going to open up the HTTPD dash SSL file and you can open it up in notepad or something like that that's what I opened it up in or sublime text or something like that and you're specifically going to look for this so just do a find until you look for 443 and we're going to change that to 8181 and that's all you're going to need to do with that file then what you're going to need to do is again in your C drive XAMPP Apache and configuration you're going to open up HTTPD again in notepad that's going to work perfectly fine you can see a little error message I have right here and the error message has to deal with this 80. You may or may not get this error. I'm just covering it just to be complete. And you're going to do a little search for 80. And once you find that, you're going to want to change this to 1234, 1234, or that's just the number I used. And, and I know that it's going to work on most systems. And you're just going to want to change that from 80 to 1234. And of course, save that file. And you're going to see here the error message that pops up on the screen at 443. But all that's going to go away here really, really quickly. And then once again, in that same HTTP file, you're going to look for the other 80 right here and change that to 1234 and save that as well. Now you have to go over inside of the control panel for XAMPP and you have to tell it where the port numbers have changed. So you're just going to click on config. This is going to pop up and you're going to click on service and port settings. And whenever you do, this is going to pop up and we're going to put 1234 right here and 8181 right here and then click on save. Now we're going to want to open up our control panel once again and you just go to XAMPP like that and you're going to look for XAMPP-Control. So just double click on that. And once you do, you're going to see that there are no errors showing on the screen except for this one. It says you are not running with administrator rights. So we're going to fix that next. Now what you want to do is click on your little start button down here and type in CMD. And command prompt is going to open up up here. And we're going to right click on that and you're going to see run as administrator. And you're going to click on that. You might get a little message that asks for your password. 
and otherwise we're just going to open up the command prompt. First thing you're going to do is you're going to type in net with a space user and you're going to see administrator default account. You're not going to see Derek Banis unless you call yourself Derek Banis. And you're going to see guest like this. And what we're going to do here is we're going to set up our administrator account on Windows 10. By default, it is not set up, but it will be after you do these couple things. So what you want to do is type in net space user space administrator space forward slash active colon yes. Exactly like that and it's going to say that it was completed successfully. Then you're going to type in net space user space administrator space star and you're going to have to type in a new password for your administrator and then retype it to make sure that it's all the same. Then you're going to want to log out as whoever you are currently on Windows 10. You're going to come down here, click and say you want to open as administrator and you're going to type in your new administrator password and click on start and a whole bunch of things are going to pop up. It's going to say hi and all these different things because it's a brand new user account. I'm just skipping that for now and everything's going to be all set up. Then you're going to go into a XAMPP again and control panel and whenever you do you're going to see that all of the errors are gone and everything is working wonderfully. One problem however is that you are logged in as administrator currently and it is not going to allow you to open up things like Microsoft Edge so you're not going to be able to run anything in browsers so that's sort of a problem so we're going to fix that by going into reg edit and change some registry values and you're going to open that up by typing in reg edit and whenever you see this we're just going to click on it and open that up and then you're going to have to search for a whole bunch of different things here so I'm going to walk you through the whole process what you're going to want to do is go to h key underscore local machine and then inside of that you're going to want to open up the software tab and then inside of that open up the Microsoft tab right there and then we'll just keep on scrolling down here until we find Windows and there's Windows and then you're going to want to click on current version and then scroll down here until you see policies where's that at there's policies and open up that and then you want to click on system and then you're going to want to look for filter administrator token and you just click on that guy and whenever you do you want to make sure that this is set to the value of one and then click on OK and that's all you need to do with that and then we're gonna to have to set another registry key so again we're going to be doing basically the same exact thing the only difference is is we're going to go down here to where it says UIPI and click on that and then for this guy you're gonna to want to open up the default and make sure that it has this value right here it's a 0x and then there's one two three four five six seven seven zeros and a one and then parentheses one and a closing parentheses and you're gonna to want to click on OK I have a link in the description that has all this information all written out so it'll save you some time and you're gonna to want to exit out of that guy and then and restart your system meaning log out and then re-log back in or just restart Windows altogether and then we're gonna go into the XAMPP directory again and reopen the control panel and you're gonna see that there are no errors here and make sure that you click on these guys to start Apache and then to start MySQL and then if you do that and open up the Edge browser you're going to be able to go to localhost colon one two three four forward slash dashboard and you're gonna see that Apache is indeed running and everything is running on your system now what we're going to do is go in and set up a MySQL uh, user account as well as a MySQL database and a whole bunch of other different things. Also you're going to want to go in and set up a user password for the user ID of root because by default it has no value. So the first thing we're going to want to do is click on the SQL tab up here and you're going to type in set password for root at localhost equal to password and I just typed in a password called turtle dove you can type in whatever you want of course and you want to come down here and click on go then you're gonna to have to go into the XAMPP folder again and PHP my admin that directory and you're gonna to want to open up a file called config.inc whenever you do there's a couple things we have to change here and after you set the password for root it's probably gonna pop up a whole bunch of errors don't worry we're fixing those errors right here and how we're gonna fix those errors is we're gonna specifically look for auth type config and password and there's nothing inside of here and we're gonna change this to cookie and then put turtle dove or whatever your password is inside of here for your password and then save your config.inc file now we're gonna jump back over into PHP my admin and everything all the errors are gonna be gone if they did show up there for you and now we're gonna create a new database 
So we're just going to come in here, click on new. This little guy is going to pop up and I'm going to call my database test3 and call it whatever you want. Don't need to change anything else and click on create. You're going to see here no tables found in database and I'm going to create a table. This is going to, I'm going to keep this very simple just not to waste time. So I'm going to call this table students and I'm going to say that it has two columns and I'm going to click on go. And then inside of here I'm going to type in first name, variable number of characters, length of 30, last name, variable number of characters, length of 30, leave everything else exactly the same, and click on save. And here you're going to see the table has been created for us. Now I'm going to click on privileges over here, and I'm going to say that I want to add a new user account, and of course make sure that I have my test3 database or whatever you just called your database selected whenever you click on add user account, and I'm just going to call this student web. So I just typed in student web, I gave it a password, then I clicked on select insert update, I'm going to fix that here in a second so that it works exactly the way I want it, and I'm going to click on go. Alright, so that new user has been added to our brand new database, so now you know how to create a database, a table, as well as an account for it. And now I'm going to click on SQL again, and I'm going to set up everything so that my student web ID or account or whatever is going to be able to work exactly the way I want it to work with my database. So inside of the SQL tab, I'm going to just type in grant, insert, select, delete, update on test3, that's the name of our database, to student web, that's the account, at localhost, identified by Turtle Dove. That's where you would put your password right there. And after you do that, click on go. And then it's time for us to jump in and actually start writing some code to test that not only PHP works, but also that MySQL works and that I can successfully go in with PHP and access my database. How I'm gonna do that is I'm gonna open up my XAMPP folder right here and htdocs, which is where all of my files are going to be stored on my web server. So now I'm gonna go in and write all that code for you. Right, so let's open up Sublime Text. That's what I'm using here, basic text editor, wherever you want it to be. And the very first thing I'm going to do is set up my configuration file that is going to open a connection to my database. I'm going to call it mysqli underscore connect.php. And you can get all the code that I have here again in the description, and it's free, of course. And just to show you where exactly this is saved at, you can see here's XAMPP, and I'm going to save this file right here inside of the main XAMPP directory, not inside of HTT docs. Not this guy. I'm going to save it right here inside. Whoops. Because scroll down right here. That's where it is. Okay, so let's jump in here. So like I said a moment ago, this is going to open a connection to the database. And I do not want this to be accessed from a browser on just anybody's machine. So for that reason, that's the reason why I'm saving it outside of HTT docs. So the very first thing I'm going to do, and I also have a more in-depth PHP tutorial and MySQL tutorial and all those different things. I'll put a link in the description underneath if you want to go take a look at that. First thing I'm going to do here is I'm going to define some constants so that these will not be able to be changed. So I'm first off going to define the user that's going to be accessing my database, and this is student web, just as you saw previously. And I'm also going to come in and define a password, and this is turtle dove. This is a terrible password, by the way. I just this is just the password that I always use in my tutorials for some reason. Don't know why. And then I'm going to define my database host, and in this situation, that would be local host. And then finally, I'm going to define the database name. So database name, and it's going to be test3. All right, got all those set up. Now I'm going to go in here, and DBC is going to contain a resource link to our database. And we're going to put an at sign right here, which is going to keep the errors from showing in the browser, except for the specific errors that I want to show. And I'm going to go connect. And then I'll pass in all of those constants. So DB host and DB user and DB password and DB name. And then I'm going to say or die. And in this situation, I'm not going to be able to access the database. So my message is going to be that I cannot connect to MySQL. And then I can come in here and post a more detailed piece of information if I'd like to connect error and then close that off. All right, so got that all set up, and that is all I need to do. This guy right here is going to be used in multiple different locations to make a connection to our database. So I can save that. And now what I want to do is come over here to get student info.php, and this is going to open a connection to the database, retrieve information, and send it to the browser. So now I'm going to make a call to that file that we just saw. So require once, this is going to get me my database connection that I need. And I'm going to go dot dot my SQLI connect. Dot PHP. All right, so now I got a database connection, or at least hopefully. 
And I'm going to issue my query. And if you don't know what queries are, once again, I have a MySQL as well as a PHP tutorial underneath of here that goes into more detail. So I'm going to go select first name. That's the name of the column inside of my database that I created previously. And last name from students. This is saying that I want to receive all of the first names and last names for all students in the database. That's a simple way that query is going to work. And I'm going to go response is equal to, and this is going to get a response from the database by sending the connection and the query. Again, put the at sign there to subdue any errors, MSQLI query, and all I need to do to get this to work is pass in the database connection and the query that I want to send to my database. Now I need to check if the query went through properly, so I'm going to go if response, which means did I get a response, did it go through, that's what I'm asking here. And if I did get a response, I'm going to go echo, and I'm going to open up a table on the screen and print out all the users on top of it. So let's just keep this very simple. I'm going to go align left and do a little bit of styling next to nothing but cell spacing. And I'm going to put a 5 inside of there and cell padding, and we'll put an 8 inside of there. I'm going to skip into the next row and put in a table row. And let's go and get ourselves, oops, let's do a line left as well on this guy. And we'll use a bold tag here. And we're going to say first name like that. Close off the bold tag, close off the table. And then let's go and do pretty much exactly the same thing with this guy. This is going to be the last name though. So let's just change this to last. And then after we get to the bottom of this, we can close that off and close that off. Now I'm going to come in here and create a while loop that's going to cycle through data for each of the rows of data that we can get here. So I'm going to go row is equal to my SQL fetch array and get a response. And then inside of this, we're going to go echo and we're going to take all the information we get as a response and put it inside of the table and then get each of these individual rows of data. So we go row and we specifically want the first name field here. And then we're going to put in the closing brackets for our table, close that off, and then we're going to go and get this row. So I might as well just copy that, paste that in there, change this to last name, close off that, and then after we finish with this one, we can go echo and then close off that as well. And next, we're going to come down here and close off our table altogether since we got all of our data out of our database and now put it on the screen. Otherwise, we have a situation in which we didn't get a response, which means we had some type of error. So we need to handle that as well. And we might as well keep this simple. Something went wrong with the query. We don't know what it is. So let's just go couldn't issue database query. And we'll just throw in a break statement. And then we'll go echo MySQLI error to get additional information and pass in our database connection. And then that closes off right there. And then after we finish all this stuff, we want to close the connection to our database altogether. So we can do that by just going close and passing in the connection we want to close. And that's all we need to do for getstudentinfo.php. That's going to get all that info. Now let's jump over to addstudent.php and let's allow the user to add student information. So I just have HTML head. I'm not doing anything elaborate here with the HTML. I'm just sticking to the bare bones what we must have. And if we're going to pass in information, of course, we are going to have to create a form here. So form action is equal to, and we're going to be using local host and one, two, three, four, because we set it up that way. And student added, which is what we're going to be calling, which is what we're going to be creating here in a moment, .php. And the method we will be using is the post method, of course. And let's just go in here right ahead and close off the form and put like a little message right here that's going to say something like add a new student and then we'll go and put in a paragraph tag and we'll have first name and then we'll open up an input box for them to put that information in. This is just going to be regular text. Name is equal to first name. Size is equal to we actually made our size 30 inside of our database, so let's just leave this be 30. Value is equal to, and then we'll close that off. And the paragraph tag will be closed off as well. Put this on the next line if you think it looks better, whatever. And then we're going to do exactly the same thing for the last name. So we might as well just copy that, paste that inside of there, change this to last name, and then change this to last name. Everything else can be exactly the same. And then we need an input button so that they can actually send information in. And this is going to be an input 
guy as well. So we'll go input type is equal to submit. And let's give it the name of submit. And let's give it the value of submit or of send. Let's make it send just to be different. And that is all you need to do. All right. So there's the form. It's all closed and add student is finished. So now what we need to do is just create student added.php so that we can process all this. Once again, bare bones HTML inside of PHP tags, we're going to create a whole bunch of different things. So what we're saying here is if we received a submit request, post submit, well, then we want to try to handle it, make sure there's no errors. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to, I'm going to do a little bit more information than I need to do. I'm going to create an array here that is going to contain any missing information. So if they didn't input their first name or last name, we're going to store that in an array. And then I'm going to go empty and I'm going to check if they didn't send me a first name. And I can just do that this way just by going first name down there. So if they didn't, send me a first name. I'm going to add that to my data missing array. And I can just do this by this and go first name. And then I'll be able to open up a little message here telling them, hey, you need to enter a first name. And then else, if they did enter a first name, I'm going to come in here and I'm going to say that I want to trim any of the white space off of it. And I can get that information by just going post first name, just like I did previously. And then I'm going to do basically the exact same thing once again for the last name. So inside of here, inside of the same if block, paste this down inside of there. And I'm going to change this to last name, of course. And let's change this to last name. And let's change this to last name. Then after all that's done, I'm going to say, hey, was any data missing? And I can do that by just coming in here and going empty data missing. So if something was missing, it's going to be in the array. And I'm going to try to open up a database connection. So I just go require once, once again, dot, dot, forward slash my SQLI. And if you set up everything and stored everything in exactly where I told you, you should be using exactly the same code here without any errors. And if you are getting errors, just go and copy and paste my code that's available in the link in the description. And we will go query, create our query here because we are going to now be inserting data into our database. Into and students is the name that we gave our database and first name and last name are the fields that we want to change. And then I'm going to say values. And then inside of here, I'm going to put a question mark and another question mark. Close that off. And there we go. There's our query. Now I'm going to define something called a prepared statement. I'm not going to get all into the prepared statements. If, Like I said, if you want to learn more about them, look for my PHP tutorial in the description and my SQL prepare. And I'm going to pass in my database connection and of course my query inside of there. And then I need to bind values being the first and last name to our prepared statement. My SQLI statement bind parameters statement. Then inside of here, the SS stands for two strings, first name and last name, if you're wondering. And then I'm just going to go F underscore name. That works. And then last name. And if you're wondering where that's coming from right here, well, it's a good thing I checked that. That's last name and there's first name. So that's where those things come from. And now I just need to execute this prepared, this prepared statement. And I do that just by passing in that variable. Then after I issue that, I want to make sure that some rows have been affected, meaning that one row has been affected. I just inputted a, you know, new student with a first and last name. So this is a way to check errors. So rows statement. And then I'm going to say if affected rows is equal to one, I can only enter one student at a time. So there should only be a situation in which affected rows is equal to one. If that occurred, I'm going to output on the screen student entered so that they know that that student was entered. And I'm going to go SQLI statement close, close my prepared statement. And then after that, I can go in and close my database connection. So close DBC. Else, if there was not one only affected row, well, I know something happened. So I'm going to say error occurred, throw in a break statement. Echo, my SQLI error occurred, and I'm still going to close my prepared statement, close, and I'm going to close my database connection otherwise. And come down here, and then after this one, we're going to say else once again, 
and this is going to pertain to whether data was missing or not. And if data was missing, I'm going to say echo, you need to enter the following data. And then I can print out to screen each of the things that they forgot to enter. So we can do that by just going for each data missing. That's my array. That's how I cycle through my array as missing. Each time it cycles through the array, whatever the current value is for that individual part of data missing is going to be stored in the missing variable. And then I'm going to just type in missing that and a break statement. And then we'll let all that close. And then down here, we can allow them to enter new student information again. And just to save us some time, we're just going to come in here and copy this form right here. There's that form. Copy it, jump over here, and paste it. And then we can save that and then open up our browser. And we're specifically going to go to localhost colon 1234 get student info.php. And if we reload that, you're going to see maybe some information pops inside of there. What we want to do is add a student. So we're just going to go in here to the browser again and we'll say add student like that. You see that pops up right there. We can say something like Sue Smith, hit send. Student entered, add new student. Or what we can do is jump in here again and go get student info. And you can see Sue Smith pops up there. Now we know our PHP works. We also know MySQL works. We also know we can create connections to it. We also know we have accounts and everything with SAMP works perfectly. So please leave your questions and comments below. Otherwise, till next time.